Hello, and welcome to the Drep and Stone podcast, a podcast where two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. And I'm Kyle. <laughs> I don't know if I like that intro. <laughs> I, I felt like, uh, what, what's the, yeah. the the big bubbly guy? Uh, no. Oh, what were you going to say? I was going the... Uh, oh, Baymax. Baymax. That, that's his name. That's what I was thinking. It was a SNL skit <laughs> oh. of these two ladies like wearing like sweaters. And they were really, really talking to the microphone really quietly. Oh. They would talk about making different things. I remember <laughs> like baking. Oh. And I remember Alec Baldwin being on there one time and talking about his sweaty balls. <laughs> Okay. Of like meatballs, I guess. I don't oh. remember. I don't remember the whole thing, but it just, everything was everything was really. It was Maya Rudolph and Annika Steyer. Always like wearing these like really ugly knit sweaters. And are just, they, are they everything the, was the sweater weather? No, that's uh, no, that's, that's uh, Amy Poehler and uh, um, Tina Fey. Yeah, <laughs> that's my favorite. Yeah, no, it was <laughs> just always really really quiet, really ASMR. Uh, actually, speaking of that, Kyle. Yeah. We're releasing the Drep and Stone ASMR version. Oh. In Espanol. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Muy bien. <laughs> no, that's not the ASMR. <laughs> be like, a muy bien. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Nobody heard that because I because <laughs> everyone's in their car listening to yeah. a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm looking mm. forward to it. That'll be fun. A lot of slurping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say something. Oh, would make sense on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Kyle. Yes, sir. <laughs> Got a question. What's that? Are you someone who makes your bed um, every morning? Every morning, like yeah. teenly? Yeah. No. Okay. So you, not routinely, but you, the way you said that tells me that you do make your bed though occasionally. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would assume everybody has to at some point. Well, I, I guess what, like what I mean is not like, uh, you know, put clean sheets on. That's not what I mean. Mm-hmm. I mean, like. Make you know, it fluff make it, it, fluff it, smooth out the sheets. Exactly. From time use, to time. use the uh, what, what's the the top blanket thing, the fancy one. Duvet cover. There it is. Use that and put like the million pillows that nobody uses on the uh, the bed. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. From that's time what, to time, I mean, I mean, we 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 host enough events sure. at the house that sure. Yeah, it's nice to have that so that people can have access to the other bathroom. <laughs> but um, you know, on a on a normal basis, really, probably only when we put clean sheets on the bed, mm. we'll do that and like make it. So like if I get I guess <laughs> oddly enough though like I sleep on top of our comforter ninety percent of the time <laughs> like it's got to be really cold for me to feel like I need to get under the right under the under the sheets here yeah yeah so like it's kind so, of always see, you're, done you're asleep on top of the covers guy <laughs> yeah so it's gotcha. kind of always done yeah but I'm, I'm assuming your wife then sleeps inside the cover Indeed. covers okay Indeed. yeah yeah. Okay, so it's all... <laughs> or sometimes we just have a shit ton of blankets on the bed, and we just, if you do, feel the need, you just, in the middle of the night... Just grab, yeah. grab whatever's closest. <laughs> whatever's okay. near. A dog, who cares? <laughs> yeah, just cover up with it. Why is this blanket... Oh my God, it's <laughs> <Wesley. a dog. laughs> Why is it licking me? Yeah, <laughs> Gross. Oh, crap, it's the... not the dog. Uh-uh. And it's not your wife. The blanket's wet. <laughs> oh, gross! Even worse. I've been in that situation before. Yeah, well, you know, kids and dogs. Yeah, Who no knows? telling. Yeah, yeah. No telling what that yeah. is. The reason why I ask is because um, since the beginning of the year, and maybe even a little bit before that, uh, I read some articles about just like getting better sleep, and it's something I've I've been striving for actually for a little bit, um, but kind of taking it a little bit more seriously. Like, how do you get better sleep? How do you feel more rested? Things like that. So right. I've done a couple of things. And one of these articles said, um, make your bed every morning. And I'm not going through like the whole rigmarole process, you know, tucking the sheets, using that weird like tucky device thing that hotels use. I'm not doing that. Tucky device. Tucky device. I like that. Yeah. You need to give me one of them. <laughs> a tucky device. A little, little tucky. A little kin. There it is. On my tucky. Oh, uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's the name of the device, the Ken. The Ken Tucky. Tucky, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Made in Louisville. Comes with a bucket of chicken. <laughs> and some bourbon. And, and some bourbon. <laughs> um, but, like, I'll take the, the, the blanket comforter that I use. Right. And just kind of, you know, put it, smooth it over, do the, do the whole it. flippy thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that, that's what I do. Gotcha. And it just, the, the idea being that it, it sets a, a kind of a ritual. Yep. And that, you know, in order to like, this is a space for this, you know, thing you get in, you, you have to uncover the bed and it, it like promotes, I guess, a ritual around sleep, Gotcha. which is really interesting. Sure. And it's worked. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wear, uh, I wear my watch to bed and mm-hmm. I can, uh, you know, track sleep and stuff and it, it definitely has worked. Getting more REMs. Well, you that? know, there's, well, there's three different sleep stages and right. we're going to do an episode on sleep at some point in the future. But, uh, 
We did one on dreams. Go back and check that out. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> I know, like, I get a better sleep score, which is kind of an aggregate of all of that. Gotcha. So, just just wanted to know. You ask that, though, and I definitely remember I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house growing yeah. up. Yeah. And my grandmother would make the bed right. every morning. They had, a, they had a TV in their bedroom, so eventually somebody would go back there to watch TV, and she would unmake the bed, but make it in a very specific way, like pull the sheets back halfway tuck those in wow. and that was like the now the bed is ready for like the day yeah kind of a no, thing. I, I get you know this is a, it's a cruise ship experience yeah for sure yeah absolutely it was and then uh at night she would go back in pull the sheets back a little further and get it ready and then like have like the one bed sheet pulled back over and so then it was ready for sleeping in interesting and it was like every single day she did that like that was just part what? of her Routine was your was your grandmother a, a stay at home grandmother? Yes, like that that was her whole life. But, okay, but like well, I guess know, I, at that point in time, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. so maybe a little more care is taken in, in that respect. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, especially of that generation, I think just that daily routine was much right. more of a prominent thing because there was not as much leisure activity it, yeah, exactly. and distractions we exactly. have nowadays. There are some things that we attribute to like you know, an, an older way of doing things, but there is a wisdom behind it. You know what I mean? Thousand percent. That might be one of those things. Yeah. I don't know if it's just, you know, <laughs> psychologically, like it just, it makes me in that space. I don't really know what's going on. Right. Um, scientifically, if there's anything. Well, but, I think, I think that might be a really interesting episode. Just like the, the term ritual. Sure. And like what Ooh. that implies, because I think that's what is kind of being created there is mm. like this ritual about that space yep. like this is the purpose for it so i did the thing this morning preemptively for it right. now that i'm going into to sleep yep i've i've done the appropriate thing sure to put me there so maybe maybe it is like just subconsciously yeah well and i now think you're like, ready for it i mean i agree with you that's going to be a, an episode because you know you also think about like we as creatures of habit and we've talked about habits before but like those rituals that we kind of go through right um to to set up things to make things better to make things easier to make things go smoother yeah totally and i think you might be right like that might be one of them yep anyway it's not what we're talking about this week cool i just i just you know nice little sidebar it, yeah it was something that uh i just kind of thought about i like it yeah i like it Hey, uh, I do have a, a very serious question to ask you, though. Indeed. You want to drink something? Nah, I think I'm all right. All right. Just kidding. Oh, I knew it. it. I knew it. I knew it. So you don't or you do? No, I'm, I'm all in. Just, okay. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm always checking. ready for a drink. All right. So we, Kyle, are drinking our first ever Doc Swinson's product. Nice. I know. This is a Doc Swinson's single barrel. This is a barrel select. Cool. I don't know. I like all those words. Uh, you're going to like the next two. Okay. And by two, I mean four. Ooh, right. <laughs> like that, Matt. <laughs> Bottled. Bottled? At. At. Cask. Cask. Strength. Oh, man. I thought yeah. you were going to go like casked it. Casket? That's, yeah. That would be three words. Well, I, I, yeah. <laughs> and that's, I, what I, that's what I thought you meant, though. Oh, I, I see. Bottle, you two bottle went it. to four. Yeah, but Don't then, make but my, then my went, four to three well, yeah, like it's a you crazy, ridiculous thing. But casket? Casket. Yeah, like cask. It. it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Pregnant pause. <laughs> cask. It. Casket. This is not the death episode. Oh. Ooh. ooh. That's going to be a dark one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. This is... Actually, they give you a lot of information on, on the front of this, but it is, from what I can tell, because I, I tried to do a little bit of research and um, couldn't find a whole lot. No? But this is distilled in Indiana. Okay. So more than likely, you know where you're always going to correct, kind of put you in that place. It not is, a bad thing. No, absolutely not. You know? It is selected and bottled by Distillers Way LLC in Ferndale, Washington. Wow. Yeah. You thought I was going to say California. Well, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a, I wasn't going anywhere. Oh, I just knew it wasn't going to be <laughs> Florida, Indiana or Kentucky. Correct. Like where, where are we getting this? Okay. Washington. Washington. Yeah. So you know, as is the way recently, you've got companies who are wanting to get into the whiskey making business, right? And they need some help getting started. And I'm assuming that's what this is. This is a two year old bottle at well, not quite a two year old bottle at this point, but this is a, a bottle that uh, I bought about a year ago. Made me nervous. 
But you're gonna be like, no, this is a two year old bourbon. You're like, what? <laughs> no. The, the entry date into the barrel is August seventeenth, twenty sixteen. Okay. The pull date or the they're, when they're bottling pour it. date, pour date maybe pull date. Interesting. Know, they, they they use pull date is September third of twenty twenty one. Okay. So what does that make? Five years. Five years. Yeah. Just well, actually, almost five, over five. Yeah. Well, like over by like maybe two weeks, basically. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, so it's a five year bourbon. This is barrel twenty one dash zero two seven. Good information. The proof is one eleven point four. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ABV, that's 55.70, just in case you wanted to know. And the bottle number, and this is why I bought this specific bottle, is 100. Ah, cool. Yeah, bottle on, even. On the nose. Yeah. Where I got this is a, a local liquor store that does a lot of um, barrel programs, barrel selects. And they, from what I can tell, this was actually something that they bought with like another distributor maybe and they distributed like a bunch of local liquor stores right uh but they had like just odd numbers and i was like i gotta, I gotta see if i can find bottle 100 right and it, was, it was there there so it is that's why i bought this one cool uh they actually give you the mash bill all right let's hear it yeah it is 60 percent corn 36 percent rye wow four percent malted barley wow i know <laughs> that is a uh, high rye i know a little bit of I bottle, like the sound of that. A little bit of bottle words for you. Limited edition, straight bourbon whiskey, epic selections by epic people, hand selected for character and bottled when ready. On the back, the this barrel was hand selected by a small group of epic people who found it just too good to pass up. If we couldn't say no, should you? <laughs> <laughs> Marketing. And then, you know, government warnings Fun. and all that kind of stuff. Right. I do want to point out, though, it's kind of, I've never seen this before. It's in really little tiny writing. Mm-hmm. I know you can't see it from where you are, but I'm going to read it to you. Easy cracking wax. <laughs> Simply twist to open. Like, I don't know why you got to tell me that. When, when, have I, when have you ever had wax? It's like, this is hard cracking wax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This, I do this, prefer that this, hard cracking wax. This ball's going to be a bitch to get into. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, that's not You're a marketing You're going to need that knife this time, Nick. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not a marketing thing. Well, I <laughs> think my guess is that it doesn't have a pull tab. No, it doesn't look I, like it has a pull tab on it. I guess you're right. So I bet they put that on there just because like people were going to be looking around all over the place. Like, how the hell do I get into this thing? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've had a bottle recently that did not have the pull tab, and I didn't even try doing that. I'm pretty sure I grabbed a knife and like did the thing. Oh, uh, you like screw it. I mean, that's honestly, I would have grabbed the and knife. They were like, no, unscrew it because <laughs> <laughs> it's easy cracking. Because it's easy cracking wax. You want to get into it? Nah. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's get into it. Uh, the wax is already cracked, by the way. Oh, shit. Yeah. No, it's that I, easy, huh? Well, <laughs> you, just, you just talk about it. It cracks itself. Crack right open. No, I've, I've had a pour or two out of this. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy cracking wax, but that cork, you can't get that open at all. Oh, shit. Put that back in there. <laughs> the wax is easy to crack, but you cannot Man, get the cork the off. B- <laughs> Look at this cork. The word dot. No, oh, that's sexy. Is on the cork, which is kind of unusual. What's on the other side? The word doc. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's doc doc. Doc. There we go. Ooh, ooh, whoo, whoo. I already spilled whiskey on me, Kyle. Whiskey Wait, in the air. I ain't even poured it yet. Whiskey's in the air. I, it's it's because I can't I can't smolder and pour at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't pour it in the mic. Oh well. <laughs> I bet you can find one. Quick clip. <laughs> yeah. 177 <laughs> episodes, 76 episodes, something like that. I can probably find, 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 find one. It was like, that'd be like a thing to have of like... Uh, All the bottle opens? Generic. Like bottle open. <laughs> yeah. That you could just plug in. <laughs> Some would be like, uh, y- y'all stopped actually opening them bottles. I'm pretty though. sure that bottle was the Jack Daniels single barrel from two years ago. You know people have called us out and like, did you actually clink the, those glasses? And like, yeah, the glass clink at the end of every episode is like the le- legit glass clink every, every time. single time. Yeah. Yeah. We've I've never cut in a glass clink. Okay. All right. In the uh glass here, Kyle, mm-hmm. color, I would say bourbon colored. Yeah, maybe even a little lighter. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I could I could agree to that. Dark dark honey. I would even say just regular like orange blossom honey. Ooh, like it, yeah. It's it's spot on. Spot on. Yep. Yeah, now that you say that, Alec, I even want to say like it's like a little orangey colored. It is. It is. Pumpkin. And what we say, five years? Five years. Yeah. A little lower. Yep. It shows. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> on the nose. Sexy legs. Thank you. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm wearing <clears throat> pants, but. Yeah, for sure. No, I appreciate them. Yeah. You saw what I did, right? <laughs> I saw. Okay. Every bit of it. <laughs> he went in there aggressively <laughs> for that nose. <laughs> I'm getting it all. 
Well, it's a new way to know it's a whiskey. You, you drink it through your nose. <laughs> Woo. All right. Man, you know what? It's been a minute since I've had a straight up bourbon. Yeah. Like, I know that we did, man, the last whiskey, or not the last whiskey, but the last bourbon or American whiskey we did, was it the Chattanooga? Chattanooga single barrel. Okay. Man. And then before that. Was- that Peated and peat. Oh no, it was peated itself. Yeah, the it just um, didn't have much peat on it. Right, that we could right. Talk. The but it was delicious. It was a peated malt. That's what it was. Sure. Yeah, but before that, man, I, I don't remember the last uh, straight bourbon. Yeah, we, did. we 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 were we've been scotch heavy for quite yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? The reason we're doing this is we had a, a request from an old friend of ours. Oh yeah, yeah, a former guest of the show, and he's like, "I love the scotch." But I need you guys to go back to bourbon for a minute. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's do it. We'll do that then. Twist my arm. Yeah. Bad gummit. But all that to say, like, it's actually really nice to have that reset. Yeah. Nice and refreshing. Yeah. Because you come back to like a straight up bourbon and it's like, oh, I remember you. Yeah. When this first entered the glass, it yeah. was quintessential bourbon. Sure. Like a bourbon candle. Yep. Like if you if you found something that was like bourbon flavored, like that's expect what you would expect it to be. Right. But now that it's been here for a second, it's kind of breathing out a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a lot more oaky yeah. barreliness yep. on it, which is really nice. Yep. I mean, again, you know, you get the caramel notes, the vanilla notes, you, you get slight toffee, but you're totally right. Now that it's breathed just a bit. The, the char is coming through, and the, the bitter on the nose is actually like becoming more pronounced, and I really enjoy that. Yeah, I've got like a little, little clementine, mm. like sweet citrus. I'm definitely getting citrus, and I'm definitely getting like heavy sweet, yeah. like, like a dark brooding sweet. At the same time, fresh. Yeah, it's leaning way more vanilla for me than yep. caramel, Okay, but like not like vanilla ice cream, right? like vanilla bean. Organic vanilla. Yeah. Like a, like a fresh vanilla ice cream. You know, you got all the little black specks in it and everything. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit of like praline too. Like what, mm. what are those? Um, Man, I feel like you, you just basically find them at Cracker Barrel and they're like caramel and pecans. Goober? Goo goo cluster. Goo goo cluster. Yeah. Man, that's, I'm getting strong, <laughs> strong goo goo cluster. <laughs> strong goo goo cluster. Weak. <laughs> Wax. <laughs> Weak wax, strong goo strong goo cluster. Got it. <laughs> well, you know what they say about a man with strong goo goo cluster. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Well, that? I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to say it on the podcast. I got you. Yeah. W- w- there are uh, friends that listen to this podcast. Oh, they'll know? Oh, yeah. Okay. They'll know. Mm. All right. T- touch a leather. Yeah. Just touch. Yeah, yeah. A little whiff. Like walk by a leather store. You didn't go in. Yeah. Didn't go, didn't go all the way. Nah, nah. Which you cross, cross the street from it. Yeah. Walking back. Because you're eating your goo goo cluster. Right. Eating a goo goo cluster. And they're like, you can't come in but here. But you're speed walking. <laughs> so you didn't get a whole lot of it. But you definitely know you walk back. Here's what I'm not getting. You're I'm not getting the calories from the goo goo cluster as you're eating it. <laughs> so you're speed walking. <laughs> I gotcha, gotcha. I will say one thing I do not get on the nose. I don't get a whole lot of proof. It's there. Like, you know that it got a little bit of a twang. Sure. But for it being over 100, I mean, yeah. what what I say, 111? 111 point. I, I'd expect a little bit of like a kind of a sucker punch. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if I hold my nose there, it, it, it definitely starts to. Whoop. Maybe it's because like get, I get inhaled it. half my glass. Yeah. So. You, you just. <laughs> you're get you're my nose all, to it now. Yeah. All right. All on my tongue. I want it. The bourbon. I want, You've I want it. never said that before. That, on, that's actually all, pretty good. All on, my, <laughs> all on my tongue. I want <laughs> all on my tongue. I want. Okay, fine. Enough sniffing time for sipping. All right. All right, the proof is there. That's where it. Oh, whoa, that's sweet. Mm. Woo, way more caramelly on the palate. Yeah, I get like a salted caramel, rich. That's perfect. I was gonna say oily, but I think rich is better. Yeah, the mouth feels really oily, and that finish, man. Whoo, you you get some spice back in that finish. Yeah, that rye balance. That, yeah, that, that heavy rye is. Mm. It's a good ride. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's been a while since I've had a, a you know just a regular bourbon. Mm. That is fantastic. That's that's tasty. It's um, luscious. That is a perfect way to describe it. Well rounded, rich, decadent. Yep. I mean, it has a nice subtle bitter. Yep. On the end, like I mean, it gives you a, a huge sweetness. Yeah. Almost like almost getting into that point where it's maybe a little too much sweet. I could say that. But yeah. And that comes calms down midway through. And a really subtle bitter, yep, just kind of takes you out to the finish. There's, there's a little, a little takes dessert you out to pasture. Ooh, there's a little dessert nature to it that yeah. I'm, I'm kind of concerned with because, like, I, I feel like you could get 
Like it, it could very easily be too much. Sure. Like you might get through like half a pour and like, mm, yeah, that might be a lot, but I'm enjoying what I've had. You Shooting know what I mean? The rest. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it's not, you know, I think a lot of times I think of like different whiskeys that we're drinking and like rugged is the word that comes up. Correct. And this is not that. No. This is way more delicate and... I think you, you said luscious, and I think that's perfect. Yeah. Like, it's not anything that's, like, rough, and you kind of have to battle with it and get through it. Like, yeah. this is just way more desserty and kind of <laughs> luscious. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't feel like I'm, I'm drinking this, and I have to ride a horse while I'm drinking this. I feel like, Mm-mm. you know, I'm sitting in, like, the back of, like, a, I don't know, a Cadillac. Yeah. And, like, it, I've got the air ride. Right. And we're going down a bumpy highway, but I don't know it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those shocks are doing their job. Correct. And and the driver, he's he's doing his thing. Yeah. He's he's got his hat on. Yep. We're we're just we're just enjoying this ride. Right. <laughs> Is it smooth? Mm. I think it's smooth. One eleven point four for yeah. a one eleven point four. Yeah. This is incredibly drinkable. Absolutely. Like, like dangerously could, drinkable. Yeah. Go through a couple of pours of this real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that, that's just, that's just it. Like you're either going to be, you know, the sweet might do you in or the, the, uh, the ABV is going to do you in. It's one of the two. Right. Because yeah. like it is, like we said, it is rich, but it is great. Like mm-hmm. this might be a perfect whiskey for someone to get into a high proof whiskey. With Indeed. Because it's not punchy. There's nothing offensive about it. Yeah. Um, it's a really beautiful, smooth ride. Not a curveball. Like, no, no. Mm-mm. And I, like, I, I legit, even though like we were kind of joking, it feels like you're just kind of going down a curvy backcountry road. It's great. Yeah. Just a little hilly. Ooh, ah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's good. That is, that is, that is quite. So, you know, what, what's interesting to me is like Doc Swenson has never been on my radar. Nope. As like a, you know highly sought after thing no but like within the past year it's popped up and i've seen store picks like crazy Mm -hmm. and bottle selects and different things and you know that just that's interesting and i don't really know why are they distilling could you find out anything i don't think they are i think like are they just sourcing i think they're just sourcing i mean that that might be different now it doesn't say anywhere on that bottle whether they're not or whether they are not but i know this bottle is definitely sourced because it does say that um, I don't know if they're distilling anything at the their Distillers Way facility. Like that's always such an interesting selected and bottled by yeah. Distillers Way. Right. So that just makes me like wonder. It's got to be a huge operation for it to be all the way down here. Right. You know, like for it to be a Washington based thing, but yet it's all the way distributed down here. Like it, it's got to be exactly. Y'all got to be putting in a bunch. Well, of, and that's what I think is going on. I mean, you've got, you know, these, and I don't know, but when you go to their website, it looks like, you know, it's, it's like five or six dudes basically. <laughs> I mean, right. that's, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it seems like they've got some massive backing and massive investment right. in that because I mean, anyone who's distilled or anyone who's been around uh whiskey long enough knows that like this ain't cheap. Yeah, I mean, just to get the liquid. Yeah. And then you've got to do your branding. Correct. And your bottling. And all and of the... All of that stuff. And then distributing. Distributing and, and all, all the that. licensing. Like, it's a nightmare. And so it's just... It's it's crazy that it's blown up like it has uh, around here anyway. Because, like, there's several stores I can go to around here and see Doc Swenson all over the place. Yep. With different store picks and different, different things. And yeah. So, and I think it's just, like, one of those, uh, here's where we're marketing it, and here's where we're trying to distribute. Right. By all means... It's good juice. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely you know, for it. Can't can't complain. Do you remember how much you paid? I'm gonna say somewhere in the sixty neighborhood. Sure. Yeah. I think I think that's what it's usually around. So yep. I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Do you actually have to <laughs> distill anything to call yourself a distillery? I... Or could you just give yourself the label? I think you can just say like, you know, Chuck's Distillery, and right. You know. You know, I did a uh, a fresh crack the other day of a Sagamore rye right that bottle same kind of thing it says like it's sourced from i want to say it was indiana also Mm -hmm. but bottled in maryland right and the the specific bottle that i opened used to be a distillery only bottle like you had to get it at the distillery and same kind of thing i wondered the same thing there like do y'all actually distill anything are you in the process of doing that right or is it just like that you're just a bottler and in the states anyway like yeah the the bottling if you call yourself an independent bottler like that's looked at as a different thing when at the same time you've got 
stuff like barrel spirits. Sure. That's what y'all do. Y'all that's are all, blending. That's all you're doing, yeah. But they don't, I don't even think they claim to be distilling nope. or distillery. Like, no. we're just well, I mean, and you barrel think of, spirits. This is what blending. we do. Yeah. And, and you think about like Compass Box, they're not distilling anything. Right. Like, they are, they are whiskey. Uh, what does it say on the bottle? Whiskey makers. Right. And so, all they're, I mean, I, I say, and we've said all they're doing is blending. Like, that is an art form and a half. And oh, we've yeah, talked about for sure. That. Like, it's a whole, but it's not. It's not distilling. Right. I mean, and we've had conversations with uh, people, with people in the whiskey business about like that very thing. And some people are very quick to like, no, we're, we're not distilling. Like distilling is a whole nother animal. I, it surprises me that nobody, it seems like in the States yet, other than barrel spirits, right. has leaned into it like that. Like why not just lean into it? And like, because yeah. like at this point in time, you're going to be dealing with a more educated whiskey clientele. Yeah. Yeah. So why not just lean into it and be like, be more sophisticated about it? Yeah. This is what we're doing. Sure. We're a bottler. I, I you know, we what? found some good juice over here. Yeah. We put it in yeah. a bottle for you. I'll tell you why. Or what, what I think why, because especially bourbon is such a like America kind mm-hmm. of thing because it is an American spirit in that, in that way. Sure. I think companies are afraid to be like, no, eh, we're not distilling. I don't know why. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it just surprises me that at this point in time, like, I don't know when Doc Swinson's started. Yeah. But, like, even even if it was just five years ago, maybe that was too long ago. Like, maybe it would take somebody starting sure. today to be like, you know what? No, we're going we're gonna to call ourselves this. Right. Because that's what we're doing. And we're, we're, we're advertising ourselves to that more educated bourbon drinker. Correct. So maybe we throw on an extra $10. <laughs> because they'll look at that and be like, oh, fuck, it's a bottler. Wow. Right. That's, that's, what, right. that's what they do over there. Yeah. Like, that's interesting. I, I'm hearing like you just like generating a million dollar idea. Yeah. Like, well, it just, it just surprises me that nobody's done it yet at this point. I'm For hearing, as long as we've been in the game. Sure. And paying attention to this stuff that uh-huh. nobody in the states is doing that. Yeah, and and to be fair, like again, our our paying attention predates the podcast. It doesn't seem like anybody over here really no, does that, no. except for the Barrel Spirits is the only one that I can think of. So am I here in a dripping stone whiskey merchant? Should be. Wow. Should be that. Wow. Wow. That what should be a thing. That? Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, we got to raise some capital though. Yeah, well, I mean, anybody that's listening, Dahi, anybody that's listening that wants to, like, you know, hey, well, let's get in on that. Yeah, I think we, I think we could do it. By well, God, we could pull. Oh my God, we could. You, you give us the right stuff. Oh yeah, and, and we, you know, we know what you know, we could do the thing. Sure, we put it together for you. You want us to taste whiskey for a month straight? Okay, <laughs> doing it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and we get to sell this to other people afterwards. You're gonna pay me to do it. Uh, wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mine went down real quick, man. I apologize. No, no, no. You're good because you don't have to wait. Like no. <laughs> you don't have to like pause between. Like it's just it just keeps going down. Right. It's, like, it's there's no like woo. All you right, know what? Gonna, as as much as I hate the S word, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that might be the definition of it. Yeah, because uh. It is. It is. It is. It doesn't it have is. to be a, a negative thing. No, I, I think it's just, you know. I, I'll say. I'll say why I don't like it. It's velvet overused. is smooth. I like velvet. Velvet's smooth. Well, I mean, you are wearing velvet pants. I know, but like, I'm just saying, like in general. How are you not sweating your <clears throat> off my velvety pants off? <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. Like you know, certain, no, certain like, right. gelato it, is smooth. Correct. Like it, it, it can be a positive thing. Yes, I it agree. Just doesn't need, it just doesn't need to be overused. I think it's overused, and it's overused in, in a things way. that aren't that thing. <laughs> right, that that's not how you should Correct. describe like, that Like, thing. people describe, like, Jack Daniels as smooth. Yeah, no, it's watered down. Correct, and that's not that's not it's what... It's not the same thing. Correct, it's not. Like, this is not 80 proof, and it's smooth. Right. That's a good, that's an amazing quality, really. All right, well, yep. now that we got a great drink, Kyle. Yep. And one that I think everybody should go try. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. especially man, if you're around here, hell, you yeah. can find it just about. Oh anywhere. yeah, here in Central Florida, like it's it's a like you said, it's a thing. Yeah. Any any of your local stores, not like necessarily like no. your 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 brand name stores, but I, like I did see it in a wine totally. Did you? Yeah, but I don't know if it was like the private like single barrel or, sure. or something. It was it was now like I'm a weird about version. It, I may have seen it at the mm. maybe just about any. Any like you know, mom and pop, liquor, mom and pop, yeah. or like independent liquor store. Mm-hmm. I think just about all of them that I can that I think about going to nowadays has either a store pick or something. Yeah, or or they've had it and they're like yeah. they, they know what it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Anyway, so uh, what do you want to talk about this week? I thought we should talk about a uh, little movie. It's coming out pretty quick. Yeah. And, you know. We, we, Wait, we, it's we, a quick movie or it's coming out? It's coming out quick. Oh, okay. in, in the next uh, couple of weeks. In like like three days. Oh, shit. When this comes out. So <laughs> yeah. it's coming out like real quick. Yeah. Today is the, well, if you're listening when this episode comes out, it's the 15th. Yeah, I guess that actually makes sense because everybody's already like doing their, their spoiler free reviews of it. Right. And that is. What? A movie as tiny as the ones on this bottle. <laughs> Ant-Man Quantumania. Is it? Is it? Just Ant Man or is it Ant Man and the Wasp? Oh, I think you're right. I think it's probably okay. Ant Man and the Wasp. Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. That's a fun word to say. Yeah. Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. Nope. Quan- Quantum Mania. <laughs> Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, that's that's like um, Dracula's castle, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's in, in Quantum, Quantum Mania. Mania. <laughs> Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. <laughs> A one. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Wait, no, that's the count. Same thing. That's the ones. <laughs> one, one, one. <laughs> three ones. Ah, ah, ah. Point four. Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's our, ooh, it's our uh, next uh, venture into the MCU. Into the quantum realm, if you will. Into the quantum realm. Yep. That, you know, that's, where, that's what we use for time travel in the MCU. Yeah. So, gotta, gotta, gotta certainly think that there's going to be some sort of a, a time well it's one of the thing. ways we time travel in the mcu yeah there's multiple ways that we time travel in the mcu the quantum realm is where the time Vortex? keepers there is that the quantum realm where loki is that's not the quantum realm well the tva is a time variance authority maybe that's what it is the tva yeah so is the tva in the quantum realm good question yeah i, I don't really know where it is i don't know either yeah i mean I, I would hmm i don't know yeah uh, but I feel I'm, like I'm surprised in the, in that the, you don't know. I want to say it is. Okay. I want to say that because, like, you know, at at the end of Loki, ah. where you're at the castle and it's like everything circling around it, I feel like those are all the different N- things that yeah. in in game. Sure. That's the th- where they're going through the different time. Well, here's here's things. my argument against that. Before we get into Ant Man Wasp okay. Quantum Media, my argument against that is that none of them, like, you never see them become small. In everything quantum realm, you mm-hmm. see them become like tiny, tiny, like tinier than Ant Man, tiny, like sure, m- microscopic, tiny. Well, uh, but I think I think it's that technology of the portal thing that uh, opens up that is breaking that. Interesting. Okay, but anyway, uh, that, that, that's just my. I, I'm confused. Right, <laughs> as you should be. <laughs> I don't just, think anybody should like. I'm just, ju- like I I'm sure there are people are. Oh yeah, but uh, we're not them. You know, in um. Let me push my in in issue fourteen. My spectacle. <laughs> in issue fourteen of uh, the third run, in nineteen sixty four. Like we're nerds, as a whole new level, and good on you guys for being that nerd. Yeah, no, I'm jealous. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm jealous. I'm concerned. Mm. No, I'd love that information. Mm. My noggin. Okay, so um, this is coming out in a couple of days. Okay, are you excited for it? I am. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I'm I'm generally excited for everything MCU wise. Um, but specifically, yeah, I, I really, I mean, I, I like, I like Paul Rudd and just about anything that he yeah. does. And I like his, his take on Scott Lang. I don't think we've been given enough of it. Yeah. So definitely excited to see more of that. So I hope they push his character a little bit, give mm-hmm. us something new. Definitely excited for more Kang. For sure. Jonathan Majors as Kang. Yeah. Um, just seeing the, the, you know, the body work that he's putting together right now. Yep. Can't wait to see what he's going to do with this character. And we haven't seen enough of him as an actor. Like, I think he, I mean, come on, we need more. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and to see what he did with He Who Remains mm-hmm. in Loki mm-hmm. and that take on the character. And now this character is going to be something completely different. And to know Can't that they're wait. all the that. same character, but they're all different variations right. and versions of that Variants. character. Yeah, yep. that's cool. And and just that 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 brief little like thing that he he said at the end of Loki of like you want to get rid of me, cool. I'm the but, best. Like, one. There's other versions <laughs> yeah. of me that are terrifying. And I'm the I'm the what does he say like basically I'm the good version. Yeah. And like yeah, you're already terrifying. Dude. Yeah. Look out for what you're about to unleash. Yeah. See w- what I like about where they're going and you, you start to see the threads of it in Loki is that you had in the infinity saga, like the big bad. Sure. And then you realize like the big bad is not the big bad. Right. The big bad is like another pawn in a game. And like he thought he was 
which is kind of like the hubris and, and the, the, the villain perspective. But then you realize like, no, dude, you're just another drop in the pond for like this larger perspective. And that I think is cool Yeah, that you're starting to see like people that you don't really know, like, are you bad? How do you fit into all of this? Right. Which I think like brings in like that, that kind of philosophical perspective of, you know, for us as viewers and us as, you know, human characters in that universe were like all oh, these people they're, they're bad they're going to destroy our world but for them they're like now nah, we're just protecting like the things that we need to protect right when you think of like in terms of loki like the tva like they're not bad right theoretically it's now we're just protecting these timelines what man i forget what they're called timelines yeah we're just yeah. protecting these timelines yep that's cool yeah for sure all right, so what what what's your what's your take on Ant Man to this point in time? Okay, I really like Paul Rudd as Ant Man, mm-hmm. but I've always felt that Ant Man is an ancillary <laughs> character. <laughs> thanks, I, I, that was not intentional, but he, you nailed it. He, yeah, thanks. He he's a a, a sub character. Like I've always felt those movies are the same way. Like he is a. A character that, like those were the movies that we just need to forward the plot along. Like we got to get to another point. How do we get there? Ant Man. Sure. I think we might have seen the first Ant Man together. I actually still haven't seen Ant Man and the Wasp. No, that's not true. I, I did see it, but I don't really remember it clearly. Right. But I, I never felt like okay, these are like movies you need to see to understand really what's going on because every other movie kind of gives me what I needed to understand. Sure. Like I can understand the Pym particle and Hank Pym and I can, I can get that pretty fast. I don't know you how mean to the, like in the, in the Avengers movies, in the Avengers saga and the Avengers movie. Like I feel like he was just kind of like another supporting character. Yeah. Thousand percent. And, but I've always until end game. Yeah. To be fair, that was also kind of like a, Oh, I don't want to say you do matter, but like you do matter. And sure. You are someone that, we can hang a hat on. Right. And that's what I'm interested in going forward. Yeah. Is that clearly he becomes a far more central character in this, what, 30th phase that we're in or whatever it is. He becomes something that you need. Right. Yeah. At I least mean, that's, that's how I feel like they're setting it up. Well, and this, this movie starts phase five. And I, and I agree. Like, I mean, the, the first Ant-Man movie, ton of fun. It was good. But at that point in time, when that movie came out, we were already more kind of adjusted to this team up perspective. We so we really be, wanted Avengers, right? Even so more. to be to be going back to a a introductory story of a of a hero, right, was a little bit of like, a, all right, let let's adjust. Yeah, this is not the Avengers. This is a new character that we've got to we've got to get into the into the storyline. And then the second movie, just like you're saying. Like it, it wasn't absolutely necessary except for the post credit scene. Right. So, which is kind of an odd thing that like, it's the post credit scene that you need to have seen for his entry in end game to make sense. Right. Not the movie itself. The movie itself you could have seen or not right. like, you know, so cause it's, it, it it's is a post credit scene where he's thrown. That's where he's thrown. No. Yeah. It's, the, yeah, that's where it's, it's the post credit scene realm. that he goes into the quantum realm. Right. And then Michelle Pfeiffer, Kirk Douglas, and Evangeline Lilly yep. all get dusted. And then he's he's caught in the quantum realm, right. which is where we pick him up. Because he's in, he's caught in the, the he's caught in the quantum realm during the snap, right? Yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, they right. get dusted while he's in the quantum okay, realm and I'm, can't I'm, get yeah, out. Yeah, right. They're the ones that are supposed to be on the outside, like pushing the thing to bring him back. Correct. Okay. And, yeah, I remember that now. And then he's only there for four hours, but it ends up being five years. Time vortex board. dilation. Um, mm-hmm. Science. So, <laughs> again. <laughs> I enjoy those movies. They're fun movies in and of themselves, but it's it's always hard to like accept the adjustment to the single line movies Correct. as opposed to man you you love those Avengers movies right. so much and you you just you always want that. So, you know, there's always a little bit of like expectation mm-hmm. that needs to be adjusted for those types well, of things. And especially when you don't have such a uh, a central character like you expect going into a Thor movie it being a Thor movie sure and I think you know Hemsworth is a the kind of character or plays the kind of character that 
I don't necessarily need this whole other cast. Like, I just, I want to see Thor, especially since Ragnarok. Like, when Taika Waititi took things over in that way, I was like, I love these Thor movies. Like, they're, they're popcorn. They're, they're great. Yeah, but like even that, it was Ragnarok. So we had Thor, we had Hulk, we had mm. we were introduced to Valkyrie. Sure. We were sure. introduced to Korg. Like we got so much it was a bit of a team up movie. Okay. I see what you're saying. You know? Whereas Ant Man and Wasp and Loki, like obviously Loki's right, always there. Yeah, so okay. it, it was all these characters I, I see that what we love. And and characters that you're familiar with. Yeah. And and when you have Ant Man, Ant Man and Wasp, and then now this one, it's like just the two of them and right. again that's i guess that's where i'm coming from they they seem like minor characters right but this feels as if you're positioning them to being more central characters hopefully hopefully i mean because at this point in time as far as who we know who are the avengers right now right like it's like hulk ant-man doctor strange if you want to count him but like he's never really like been like an avenger he's yeah. just kind of like helping right um so spot spider-man's Spider-Man, out there yeah but we don't really know his current state right and so so it is like i think that's like for me at this point in time going into any of these movies it was the same thing with uh with with wakanda forever right of like how are you going to help explain sure the state of things post snap see and, and here's here's where i'm a bit concerned post end game like the TV stuff that we've seen, I've I've liked all of it. Yep. the The movies have been hit and miss for me. I mean, and and that's, that's since Endgame. Yeah, since sure. Endgame, and that's par for the course. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just me. But I felt like starting with Iron Man and then ending with Endgame, you had a a sense of time, like how much time has passed. And they, I don't know, and I'm I'm sure that there's somebody out there like, nope, it is exactly the same amount of time from. 2008 to 2019 right like it is exactly that amount of time that passes within the films passes in our real world but i don't and i'm not i'm just you know spitballing i don't really know that right but i i don't really get a sense of like timeline because so far it seems as if the majority of these movies are all happening at the same time falcon and winter soldier happening you know just or post end game Right. Pretty close. Right. You know, WandaVision, pretty close to Endgame. Doctor Strange, right after right that. after Endgame. You know, so like, what is the timeline? And you're not expanding that out. It's almost like, okay, we got to tell you where everybody is right now. Right. And and then we can start to move things forward. Right. I mean, Shang-Chi, right. You know, all of these things are happening so close that I don't get a sense of scope. Right. And, and maybe like. Maybe I didn't know that that was something to look forward to, you know, in 2010 when things were actually like, okay, we're going to do this. Like we're ramping this up. Right. Maybe I didn't know that then, but like now I'm aware of it as a, a viewer and a fan. And I'm just, I, I'm, I know that there's a vision in the plan because I've seen it, but it's like, okay. Well, to me, to me th- it all feels really similar to me of when you look at those first three phases, phase yeah. one ended with. The big team up, sure. the Avengers. Yep. That that at that point in time, that was the peak of the mountain of like cool. Right. Like you did the thing. You brought these huge characters from their own independent movies together into this one big huge team up and, and killed somehow it. it fucking worked. Yeah. Because I remember thinking like, there's no way this movie's gonna be any good. Yep. You can't. There's no way they can do it. They can't give equal time to all these big huge characters and have any kind of um, continuity. Yeah. Make it any makes sort sense. Of sense. Yeah. Be any kind of satisfying. But then it worked. Yeah. But I remember like being so disappointed in Iron Man 3 because that was the first movie that came out after that. Correct. Because you kept thinking to yourself, all right, so the president of the United States just got kidnapped and Iron Man's the only person that can help? Like, <laughs> why? where's where's Captain America? Where's Black Widow? Where's where, where are all these other characters to help right now? Right. We've already seen they know each other and they can do it. Yeah. And so there, there was this like weird kind of like, oh, well, that was unsatisfying. Yeah. But at the end of phase two, when we got Avengers Age of Ultron, at that point in time, the setup had already been put in place. Sure. There's this bigger bad, and we're 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 going to get little nuggets that mm. are going to eventually lead us to that thing. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's what the same thing is happening right now. It's just we didn't get the big team-up movie at the end of phase four right. to get us jacked. Sure. So we're missing that element. That's a good point. Well, and I, I would say, like, in relation to what you just said— I think it's more successful because 
what we got at the end of right after Endgame, which is Phase Three. Endgame ended Phase Three. Ended Phase well, Three. That's technically Spider Man No Way Home ended, ended phase, phase Three. Okay, so but Even then. And, and maybe it makes it's way just, more sense in phase four. But anyway, maybe it's result of pandemic. But like what we have starting phase four in terms of that are a lot of these like more bottled um, TV series. And I know that that's not how the timeline was supposed to work. So right. I'm saying like maybe it's a product of pandemic that allowed us a, a little bit of a cool off period and right. like. Okay, so what's going on here, Sam and Bucky? You know, what's going on with Wanda and Vision? Like, what what's happening post this like you know cataclysmic event where, yeah, we won, but we got our asses handed to us, and right. like people are gone that we love, right? And so, like what you just said, that's where is the next commingling? Well, where I, is that? And they haven't really set it up. Sure, and I don't think it's going to happen in Quantum Mania. I think. Quantumania's place of what I'm expecting is that's going to be our setup for mm. here's where we're going to get to Avengers King was it King Dynasty? Yeah, something like that. So I think I think this is going to be our setup, and now everything after this will give us that little bit of movement uh, forward. That makes sense. You know, like when we see the Marvels, that's going to be another little here's a little thing. Here, when we get to Guardians three, there'll be something in there that'll give us a little push. It. Okay, you know, everything from now on will get us to there. And then after that, it's getting us to whatever the other one is. So it's almost like you have to kind of treat phase four and beginning of phase five as you did one. Yeah. Like it's, it's more here, like, it's more like reset. placement, right? Reset. Like here's where these characters are now after all of this. Okay. And now we can again, start to like focus towards that in game <laughs> end point. So if you view it that way, it makes total sense. Yeah. But I just like, whether or not that's what they're doing, oh, sure, I could be, sure. I could be way off. But like, you know what I mean? Like, looking at it from that perspective, okay, I see what they're trying to do, and it also maybe it's just the product of culture. Like, we're so used to movie, 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 movie. Yeah, we've gotten that, but it's all been like what's happened and no setup for what's happening. And we, and we just we haven't gotten any kind of a team up. Right. And and that's what we love. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, you've gotten bits with, and pieces. Without, without Spider-Man No Way Home, where there was the team up of the Spider-Man. Correct. Correct. Which was phenomenal. Epic. Right. But other than that, like, you know, it's the same thing. Like, who who are the Avengers right now? Right. Who's running the Avengers initiative right now? Where the hell is Nick Fury? Yeah. We have no clue. Like, I, a lot of that stuff, because there's, there's a secret invasion series coming that right. is all about Nick Fury. There is the Armor Wars series that's coming up that is War Machine. Mm -hmm. It's Rhodey. And I think there's the Ironheart series oh, right. coming up. So there's 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 things coming that I think will again give us sure. give us context for these characters, but also they're gonna throw in little nuggets of how this is how this is going to eventually connect into and, the main thing. And what you just said is the exact reason. I'm not like just super jacked for Ant-Man whilst Quantum Mania. Sure. It's that is it is it all just set up. Right. Could be. Do I need to watch a two hour movie for a fifteen second end credit? And like I I'm gonna watch it. Like that that's not fair. But <laughs> my my hope for this one though is because Kang is the main villain. That you're gonna that this is gonna be necessary watching. Okay. To help understand the next Honestly, sure. like two phases. So the next like six years of movies, this movie will be quite right. essential to understanding some of that. I can see that. Absolutely. But I think that, that also like because of there's a lot of people with the same perspective of like, yeah, hey, man's fine. But like, I, yeah, I'll go watch it. But then there's some people who are like, no, I don't yeah, need I'll it. Pass. And then now you're if you don't understand that or you don't have that perspective, like you might have done missed something. Yeah. Ten years ago. That's a good argument. Right. But nowadays where you can go on YouTube and, and watch, watch yeah. an infinite number of like, here's a five minute recap of this movie. Sure. Not really an issue anymore. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. And it might, even in that instance, probably encourage more people. Like, you know, if the word gets out, like, no, that's really, it's really good. And you it. really need to know the setup here to understand who that character is. It, it would probably encourage more people to like, okay, well then I'll wait, I'll wait till it comes out on Disney plus and then I'll check yeah. it out. That's a good point. Like we, we were watching Wakanda forever last night and like e even in that there's there's so many things that are just like i think is that movie essential watching mm. maybe maybe not but 
that you still get a lot of questions out of that of like, you know, wait, so all this stuff happened with Thanos and y'all just like chilled <laughs> down in the ocean right. and didn't feel like you needed to take part because dude, you're, you're really fucking powerful and it would have been useful, <laughs> you know, in, in that battle for you to just like help out a little bit. Could have helped. You know, cause you like knew what it was affected going on. you guys too. Like, yeah. And like, and that's another thing. Like my, my daughter actually brought it up. She's like, it's weird that he's not talking about the snap. Because it would have affected Because it would have had half of your people snapped out of existence, too. Right. So there should have been some sort of a recognition Remember that thing of that. where, like, half of everybody are gone? Maybe you have, at this point, already figured out what happened. Mm. But you could have made a reference to how the snap affected your community down here. And mm. that made you want to take more notice of what's going on around you. Right. And maybe we do need to be more cognizant of land people maybe maybe the snap doesn't happen under the water i don't think that's what happened, don't think. <laughs> maybe maybe well probably not it's not ocean it's the salt a- anything in the ocean you're good <laughs> it's salinity that's what keeps the snap out <laughs> that's why if only I, we knew man well i mean that that's why i drink about uh three glasses of just pure salt water a day it's a good call yeah yeah i mean that's also why my hands the gungans are... safe <laughs> 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 Well, you got anything else? No, no, I don't think so. No. Um, are we going to see this Friday? I'll let you know when we're going. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> easier. I know my kid, she will not be cool with waiting very long. Yeah. It'll be sometime this week. Well, you can let me know. We'll and we'll uh, see, hopefully see hopefully we can get the uh, the stars to align, the schedules to... Uh, I'll have my people call your people after they I'll call me. I'll give you as much heads up as I can. <laughs> Hey, if we're it's on 30 the way. minutes. <laughs> I, I apologize. But that was like we're going when now. We realized at that point in time we could go make it and fit it in. Yeah. All right. All right. On that note, we are you, are you, I mean, we're going to go see it. Oh. So, you know, I at some point you'll see it. I will see it. Did at you some go point. see Wakanda Forever in theaters? No. Nah. So, I mean, you know, you'll yeah. see it at some point. Though. Yeah. I'll see it at some point. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not okay. I'm going to say this. I'm not going to rush out to the theater. Yeah. If I see it, I see it. If I don't, I'll see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah, for yeah. sure. There's been lots of stuff that I told you, like, dude, you got to see that. Yeah. It's like, I'll get it to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you watch it? No. Yeah. You, did you, you watch you, it? You, no. <laughs> you were not tempted by word of mouth. <laughs> like, I will we're going to talk, in- talk about it on the podcast in, in, in a week. Cool. Did you watch it yet? Nah. Nah. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'll, 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 I'll send you a couple of videos and <laughs> we'll be able to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, listen, no one will tell me what to do. <laughs> Quite the opposite. You tell me what I'm going to go watch, and then I'll probably choose not to. Just, to, just, <laughs> just because. To piss you off. Just because. Just because I can't. Just because I don't like that. <laughs> I got principles and morals, and damn it, I'm sticking to them. <laughs> on that note. On that note. We would love to know what you think about Doc Swinson. If you've had the... Ooh, cheers. cheers. If you've had the single barrel, or you've had any of the Doc Swinson's, Swinson's versions, because I know that there's a bunch out there. Yeah. Uh, we want to know what you think about them. Because it's it's quite delicious stuff. There's absolutely nothing to talk down about. Hey, go grab the stamp. You got it. Of approval. Oh, shit. Stamp it on it. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle everywhere. Sorry. That's what we need. What? We need a stamp. Of approval. Mm. Just my face and your face and approved beneath it. Got it. <laughs> we also want to know what are your thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? Yeah. You looking forward to it? Or are you kind of like, eh, wait till it gets out on Disney Plus? Or are you more kind of like, uh, I could care less about the MCU? <laughs> There's somewhere in between all those yeah, things. Yeah, uh, you're somewhere on that spectrum. Yeah. Spectrum, correct. And if you've already gone to see it and you're listening to this episode after the movie comes out, what did we get wrong? <laughs> well, you know, shoot us a one out of ten. What'd you think? Oh, one, one being one, one, didn't two, enjoy oh, okay. it and ten being it was great. You just put a number somewhere, somewhere, and we'll, like we'll see that. We'll mind see that number. Mind altering. One eleven point four is really good. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 a high rating. <laughs> Absolutely, really, really high. On the one to ten scale, one eleven point four is really, <laughs> really high. I really liked it <laughs> so much. I watched it one hundred and eleven point mm. four times. Wow. The point four is the the times that you had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, room. yeah. So it didn't it didn't add well, up you, to a full so, other. So in viewing. that case, you actually probably watch it like one hundred and seven times, right? Because like then it just adds up. No, it's versus. It's, it'd be like you actually watched it one hundred and fifteen times. But when you subtract all the times you had to go to the bathroom, it oh, actually backed up down to yeah. like eleven. Well, you know math. Yeah, yeah, it's my strong suit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, I was, I was, I was doing quantum realm math. What do you think a strong suit is? Is that like the leotard with like the skinny, 
<laughs> shit. It's called a singlet. Is that, is that your strong suit? That's a singlet. Is that? But is that the strong suit? You can um, only wear that when you're strong. Well, when I when I next go to the bathroom, I'll, I'll test mine out and see if it's okay. strong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It makes me feel strong. <laughs> does it? Well, it holds everything in place. <laughs> does it? You want me to show you? On that note, you can get in touch with us through email. That's drepinstone at gmail.com. You also get in touch with us through social media. Man, we're all over the place. D R E P and Stone. It's one word. Come find us somewhere TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, literally everywhere. We're there. Comment on a thing, like a thing, laugh at a thing, share a thing. Yeah. We appreciate it. Like, really share a thing. Yeah, really. Like, really. Honestly. Like, I don't know if you can double share, but if you can, double share. What I like to do is I like to add stuff to my. Uh, story. Oh, so it's like we made the thing, then you just pop it up there. It stays yeah. there for like twenty four hours, and oh. it goes away. So it's not like a permanent if, thing. If, it, if, if it's I'm like a, it's cool. If I'm an Instagram user, can I add that to my own reels somehow? Maybe that sounds like a thing. If yeah. it's not, we got to get in I'm touch sure with somebody. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Yeah, and tag us. Tag us. Hey, you know what? It'd be really cool. Tag us in a picture while you're standing outside the movie theater or in the movie. Drinking Doc Swenson's and listen to the podcast. <laughs> That's what flasks are for, everybody. <laughs> Come on. Pro move. Like, like we ain't done it. You can support the podcast. And Kyle, probably the most fun way yep. to support the podcast is through our Patreon page. It really is. Yeah. You get a lot of cool stuff. We're, we're trying new things out. We're adding constantly. things. Constantly. Adding new things. Um, just making it better, making it fun. And, um, you know expanding the horizons yeah you get a lot of cool stuff on there for sure yeah you do you can also support the podcast by reading drop and stone wherever it is you find great podcasts like this one and finally you can support the podcast by reaching out to your fellow moviegoer preferably pre trailers and just like hey um i actually listened to an episode about this on drop and stone um are you a drop and stone listener are you a drop are you a Dreppin' Stone listener? Are you a Dreppin' Stone listener? Are you a Dreppin' Stone listener? You're not? What's wrong with you? Get them out! Just just go go download an episode of Dreppin' Stone. Indeed. Play it right there in the movie theater. <laughs> as loud as you yeah. can. Listen to this! It's way better than this movie. <laughs> bling, 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 bling. <laughs> hey, down in front. Shut up. I'm listening. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. May your glass ever flow. And your ass never show. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Mmm. Look at there's a label on this label. Well, how about that? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it is odd. Hey, like them apples. That's impressive. I know. Actually. Thank you. That seems risky. <laughs> I'm going for it. I'm doing it. Time out. Yep. I don't know where the echo's coming from. That might have done it. <laughs> I want that sound <laughs> on the on the blooper reel. What? Whatever. Your, your ass going across <laughs> the microphone. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to do, man. Smooth. <laughs> I need to cut my mustache. What else you got in that coffee? Ooh, adorable. Assless chaps either. So you know. <laughs> I mean, they go hand in hand, or cheek to cheek, and cheek to cheek. <clears throat> Dancing cheek to cheek. Woo. Not those cheeks. All right, for a one eleven, is it one eleven point four? One eleven point four, yeah. You those, you those that, ones are so they are they fucking so close together. Like, why did you do so that? So tiny. Um, Everything else is fairly easy to read. That those <clears throat> ones are tiny. More about you than it is about me. Correct. Too good.